So who's been involved with so who's been involved with the sculpture film? How did it get started? I think the original idea came about three years ago that we wanted a piece of of art that would recognise um, the growth of the village and <laughs> recognise the area that the village sat in. Um, so I think we approached the Museum of Iron um, Sculpture and they then brought Jim on board um, and it just kind of went from there really and Jim did a lot of research into the area um, and kind of the industry and background of Lightmore and came up with the design for the bottom half of the sculpture um, and the trustees wanted the community to get involved in developing the top half because the bottom half is very representative of the area they wanted the top half to represent or be represented by the community and what the community saw um, like more in the area as being about um, so we did the consultation so yeah so we 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 did a, a, ba a basic consultation um, and from there the school children got involved, um, members of the community got involved and gave us some ideas of what um, like we meant to them. They met with Jim, um, Jim took those ideas and worked that up into a more abstract design. Um, and that's, that's where it came from. Did, the, um, did anyone go down and have a look? Progress. Um, yep, the uh, a couple of our residents did. Um, some of the children went down. Um, some officers. So we went and watched it. The moulds being made, and we watched it being cast. And then um, Jim, who is from America but works out of the um, the local sculpture museum, um, he came back um, a couple of weeks ago to um, do the final finishing on it which is what has given it the colour that it that it is not that you can see that yet um we'll but, shortly. yeah you will shortly so um he came back and, and finished the sculpture and we went down and watched um, some of that happening so we've we've tracked it from from its very beginnings all the way through to to the finished product and you're saying there's going to be um an archive of in the progress. Uh, yeah, absolutely. There is a um, we've captured on film the process from beginning um, to end, so that will be available for people who are interested in the processes that they used and the way that it was put together. Um, so, so why wasn't that crane used to just um, get this over within half an hour? The the gantry that's been used was um, actually built by um, the curators at the museum. So it's a very traditional gantry um, because that represents um, the traditional um, techniques that have been used to actually produce the piece. Um, the, the piece um, has been cast using traditional casting methods and the moulding methods were all very traditional hand-carved. Um, yeah, and the, the video that, that is being produced shows you the casting, and it's it's a real it's a real sight um, to, to to watch it actually happening. Um, quite a dangerous process, um, so it's yeah it's quite a spectacular thing to watch it being cast. So that'll be quite interesting, um, and it's, that's, as I said, that's all been captured on video.
I think they're just drilling the sculpture, aren't they, to the, the plinth at the moment, and then there's going to be a reveal. The yeah, they're, they're fixing um, the sculpture to the plinth. Um, they'll also be fixing four plaques, and the plaques um, are there to um, to highlight what the sculpture's about, what the Angle Village Trust and the Lightmore community is about. Um, there's a, one of the plaques talks about the museum and Jim as an artist um, and the other plaque um, represents the, the involvement that the community's had in actually designing and, um, and moving this piece forward. We'll also, um, once the sculpture's in and the finishing works have been done to the plinth, there will also be a, a plaque put up to show people what the plaque, what the sculpture means and how to read it. Um, so it will give you more of an idea of each of the different layers of the, of the sculpture because they all represent different um, different elements of, of Lightmore's history or Lightmore building as a community. And that will be available on um, the website as well. We will make that available to, to the blog. Look at the care and taking on that look. <laughs> All very, very traditional, and but Jim, obviously this is Jim's piece. Um, he designed it, he created it with a with a team around him, um, and the care that they take in in everything from the moulding to the casting to the building to moving it into place and now fixing it down. It's all. Um, yeah, she's using small bellows there just to get yeah. the dust off. This is the sort of care when you went down and watched them building it. It was very, very meticulous. Um, all very hands-on. No particular machinery used. It was all very much done by hand, and you can see that in, in the way they're fixing it. Thanks It's good to show people because then they can um, you know, realise how much effort and work's gone into gone into the sculpture and, um, and the, the care that's been put into it from as I said from the the initial design concept the amount of research that Jim undertook to understand the area and its history and to understand how the concept of this the village came about and how it's going to develop in the future um, is all represented in the, in the sculpture <laughs> So, Leah, really Courtney, Megan, um, did you take part in uh, helping, I think, about ideas for the top of the, the flint? Yeah. Uh, top of the sculpture? Yeah. And um, I guess that you were consulted with, what sort of ideas did you come up with? What Lightmore means was what there is oh, in Lightmore. Yeah. 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 Did you have the idea yeah. of um, yeah. like, 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 like a tree I've got, I've got, I've got like the government. Yeah. Like yeah. Like yeah. Like yeah. Like Ah. And what was the leaves? They were different. They were different colours. Representing what they were. Because there's a lot of trees in Lightmore. Um, no, but I mean, pink the office. Yeah. Yeah. I saw you do it. I'm sure it was like different, different ages and different things that were happening in the village, wasn't it? It was the way that they connected. Yeah, it's great. Well done, guys. It's, um, but you can't wait for the reveal. Are you coming back out later to see the reveal? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Did you say a few words, Christian, if you wouldn't mind? It's nice to see such a long process coming to an end. <laughs> You've got a smile on your face. How does it feel now that it's finally been unveiled? Put in its place. Ah, uh, feels good. It actually looks like I. Uh, Hoped it would sitting in the square. And do you want to tell everybody here a little bit about what they can see? <laughs> Basically, what I told you before is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear that. Oh, right. Well, uh, the whole piece is based on basically this piece of property that Lightmore Village is, is sitting on. Um, it's all based on the landscape and the industrial architecture that. Uh, was found in the area, uh, starting with the bricks at the bottom were actually molded from uh, bricks from the brickworks at Whitemore and at Colbertdale um, that were found uh, in the area. 
laid out in basically the same format as a traditional floor of, a, of a, an original brick kiln. The second form is based on the original Lightmore brickworks that um, was just to the east of here. The next section up is based on uh, what are called uh, furnace hearths that were the bases for the blast furnaces for the iron. Uh, that you would find in Lightmore, Colbertdale, and Maidley. Um, the next section up is based on iron rails that were used for the tramways that were, uh, I believe Lightmore was the first area to use iron rails for the trams rather than wood. Uh, and then the top form is uh, front and back are based on the landscape of the area. The uh, uh, forward side here towards you is based on the Severn Valley and uh, the Severn River and then the waterworks that ran from Lightmore that powered the Colbertdale uh, Darby furnaces and then flowed into the Severn. And then the back side, the line work describes the original hedgerows that were found in Lightmore, uh, where the Lightmore village is now which I come to understand, many of which are still here and have been here since uh, at least 1038 when they were first recorded. You've got some of the uh, local school pupils here who um, helped you out a bit in, in, in creating this design and they just explain what role they played. And was, it, was it an important role? It was. I took the feedback of the, the school children and uh, the local residents as far as suggestions they would like to see in this very top section as far as um, the natural area and the landscape. Um, even uh, in the surfaces, are, uh, I actually molded in uh, moss roots that are found, I actually found them over at Cherry Tree Hill where another one of the Lightmore Colbertdale brickworks were. Uh, now the site of the Museum of Steel Sculpture where the, the piece was cast in iron. So it was important to get the feedback of, of uh, everybody in the area to try to make it make it something that uh, had ownership to the, the public and the people around here. Take a look, have a little feel. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful.